This is CNN Breaking News. Hello and welcome everyone to CNN Newsroom. Appreciate your company. I'm Michael Holmes. We begin with breaking news from Afghanistan where Taliban fighters have now captured two more key cities, Lashkargah and Kandahar. Video released by the militant group claims to show victory celebrations in Kandahar. CNN can't confirm its authenticity. Taliban fighters say they seized hundreds of weapons, vehicles and ammunition, as you can see there, American-supplied vehicles. The head of the provincial council says the entire ta city is under Taliban control except the airport and army corps. Now, another video purports to show Taliban fighters taking over the governor's building in Kandahar. Afghan national forces appeared to either surrender or flee. The Taliban now controlling 14 provincial capitals. Let's bring in CNN international security editor Nick Peyton Walsh live in London. Uh, so you've got the taking of Kandahar, now Lashkar Gah, just the latest in stunning turns of events in a string of them. Speak to the significance as Kabul is increasingly uh, surrounded, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's important to emphasise that Lashkar Gah uh, and its fall, where we understand it, pretty much all of it, with the exception of one or two uh, army bases, is under Taliban control, is a deeply symbolic moment. Uh, Kandahar, of course, was massively important, but Lashkar Gah in itself, in Helmand, is a place where so much US, NATO lives have been lost, uh, and it's a focal point of the opium trade that funds uh, the insurgency. So the fact that the Afghan security forces put up such an intensive fight, laid down a lot of their commandos there because they knew they had to hold that symbolically, and that they have now lost, along with Kandahar, in the same night, it appears, is uh, absolutely startling. And that with Herat leaves the major cities in the west and south of the country under uh, Taliban control, uh, particularly the birthplace of that movement, Kandahar. We're also hearing now, too, uh, that Feroz Court, which is in a sparsely populated province of Gore, has also fallen, fallen now as well. So it is literally a slow, uh, increasingly fast drumbeat of provincial capitals falling at this particular point. Now, Mazari Sharif in the north is still under pressure, an economic hub there, which certainly I think will hear more about what's happening around there in the day ahead. And Michael, you importantly point out, does this turn focus now to Kabul? Sadly, it does. There's no indication the capital is currently uh, being besieged or under threat, but it's increasingly surrounded geographically. And so we're into an extraordinary two to three weeks ahead, where the US has now stated they will put 3,000 Marines into Kabul International Airport to secure it, to get their diplomats out, to likely get out some of the tens of thousands of Afghans who they've said might uh, get special immigrant visa status. And then at the end of August, they will leave under the current plan. That may alter, but we are then going to see the extraordinary departure of US forces and personnel to a, a greatest extent, frankly, and then see what exactly comes after that. Uh, I have to say it's it's strange to see the former ally of the Afghan government, who say they are still the ally, create this moment of departure, emphasise it almost, by sending in a very practical, very necessary security force for their diplomats. But it does send a message too, I think, and talking to senior Afghan officials last night, that certainly the US knows which direction this is likely to be going. And certainly within those senior US uh, Afghan officials uh, is a sense of, of betrayal, uh, of loss. Um, Kabul by no means is an easy thing for the Taliban to walk into. But I have to say all conventional wisdom is essentially off in that nobody thought they would sweep cool. through in just one week this number of provincial capitals. But Kabul, six million people, a lot of them very government loyal, could be messier. We simply don't know where this will play out, Michael. It, it's interesting. I'd like your thoughts on this. I mean, um, Ghazni is another place that uh, is in the headlines on all of this. Al-Qaeda had a long history there. Osama bin Laden saw it as a safe haven for his men. I mean, what do you see as the risks of an Al-Qaeda resurgence? They are fighting shoulder to shoulder in some parts of the country. Yeah, I mean... The US perception of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan has essentially changed to suit their policy at the time. 
Uh, obviously in 2001, they were all over the place. And then in the last decade, we sort of persistently heard uh, as the US tried to wind down its presence there and declare victory that Al Qaeda were reduced to a core of hundreds. That seems to still roughly be the case. But within those hundred ranks are some pretty senior people. I mean, I reported on a story how in October last year, an Afghan intelligence raid killed uh, Abu Masan al-Masri, the sort of number two uh, there, very much in charge of propaganda and communications. He was said to be communicating with other al-Qaeda cells in Syria. There appeared to have been a US strike uh, on one of those cells shortly after his possessions were in fact uh, intercepted. And I was told the Americans and in fact asked the Afghans not to publicize their assassination of Masri, presumably, so they could get on with acting on the information that they found. So there's plenty of evidence that senior al-Qaeda figures retain a presence in Afghanistan. In fact, Masri was killed in Ghazni, the city you just referred to. Um, it is hard, I think, to delineate in this changing world of extremists precisely where al-Qaeda ends and the Taliban begin. The Taliban's senior leadership brought in part of the Haqqani network, who were considered an al-Qaeda affiliate a few years ago, into their command structure. So the lines are blurred. The Taliban are clear they don't want foreigners or terrorists. They signed a deal with the US saying they won't let Afghanistan be used for attacks on foreign countries. Uh, but it, it is a very key pressing problem and one I think that we will hear much more about than we do now in the years ahead. Michael? Yeah, great point. And you mentioned the Haqqani network. We're yet to see uh, how they may play into all of this too. Um, uh, good to see you, Nick. Appreciate the analysis. Thanks. Ali Latifi is a freelance journalist based in Afghanistan. He joins me now from Kabul. Uh, Ali, thanks for doing so. I know it, it's been difficult there. Uh, how are conditions in Kabul? Thousands of displaced people arriving in the capital. What's the level of anticipation and concern? Since maybe what, like 5, 6 p.m. last night, we live in a different country. Um, things have changed. Obviously, things have changed a lot. You know, the, the fact that Herat and Kandar were lost essentially in the same day. You know, the two, two of the biggest cities in the country, you know, cities that, that people never would have imagined would have fallen, you know, and it was sort of your last hope saying that if they weren't able to take over these cities, then, you know, they won't make it much further or they won't make it into the big major um, population areas. And seeing them make it into those cities, and if you've been to those cities and you understand sort of the historical and the cultural significance of them, seeing those those videos and that footage, it really, really affected people. You know, it affected the whole country. Kabul is like New York City or LA, where very few people are actually from Kabul. You know, obviously, like you know, people over decades spent time here and like claim to be Kabuli, but still, you know, every almost everyone's family comes from somewhere else. So when when you look at this map and, and you see these provinces falling. Almost everybody probably has some connection to one of those. Are Afghans you speak with angry about the speed of the withdrawal of the West? Do they feel let down or abandoned, not just by the West, but by their own leaders, who've often, of course, been accused of being corrupt or running the country uh, in an inept way? That I was speaking to friends from Herat and Kandar last night, and that was exactly what they were saying. They, they were saying that they felt like there wasn't much of a fight put up, that there wasn't much of an effort put into defending these cities, that, that these cities fell too easily and too quickly, considering their significance to the history and to the population and to the economy of this country. Um, and so many people online are saying that, you know, just expressing so much of their frustration at this government uh, for its corruption, for its inability. Is there a risk for the Taliban domestically that, you know, having got their chief demand, which is the departure of foreign forces, that them continuing the fight and killing fellow Afghans might backfire on the group in terms of whatever grassroots support they have? I mean, they're not killing Westerners right now, they're killing Afghans. And, and this, this, this is exactly what people say, right, is, is you were fighting an occupation. You left the occupier to leave. And you even agreed for a year not, not to touch their forces or their administrators or anything like that. Um, 
in the way they've been acting and the way they've been storming through these cities has also lost them a lot of support, you know, because if, if you see how many people are fleeing these cities, right? And, and I've talked to people who have fled them. I've, I've even met them when they've come to Kabul. And what they all say is when we hear they're on their way, like we know they're coming in a day or two, we flee as soon as we can because there's a lot of fear. Right there, there's a lot of fear of the fighting that will come with it because if they come and they take over your city, that means they're going to be fighting, you know, with with the security forces. The security forces are going to be fighting with them, and who's caught in the crossfire? You're there. I mean, they're they're knocking on the door, or they will be soon uh, of of Kabul. Are are you worried yourself? Um, I'm worried for my people. I'm worried for the country. Are you angry at how this came to be? Yes. Because... Because I feel like everybody shares a responsibility in this. Ali Latifi, thank you so much. Uh, thinking of you there in Kabul and everyone else there as well. Um, following your Twitter and people should because uh, you can learn a lot. Ali, thank you so much. Thank you.